Holy shit, 1200. I think this thing's broken. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Fish Friday. Today we are gonna to be doing something that I never in a million years thought I would be doing. We are gonna be testing the light levels in my reef tank using an Apogee, Apogee, Apogee par meter. That's right, we rented a par meter. Now this isn't any regular Red C-Max 250 with Radeon XR30 Pro lights par meter testing because in my tank, my XR30 Pros are built into my hood. I have not seen this done a lot, and I've definitely not seen any PAR readings on it. With that being said, my lights are currently on their maximum peak for the day, not maximum of the Radeons. They have plenty more to go, but they're full capacity with what I run them at. According to a couple of the BRS TV videos, I believe they said SPS is between like two to 300 PAR and LPS and softies between 75 to 150. I don't know, we'll see. But if you guys are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on. I post new fish videos every single Friday and Aquashella is gonna be coming up pretty soon. The PAR meter that we are gonna be using is the Apogee Underwater Quantum Flux, model MQ510 if that makes a difference. Now, this is gonna be a one person operation, so I'm just gonna be saying the par levels out loud, and then I'm gonna end up making like a little diagram with a picture in my tank. This is the Red C-Max 250, and I have two XR30 Pro lights built into the hood. I completely gutted the inside and just left the screen and the timer and the fans so that the radions can still be protected. I was a little bit worried about having them built in as a lot of people would just take off the hood and then have the hangovers, but I really didn't want a rimless. I wanted to kind of, I don't know, keep everything enclosed. It's just a little bit more of my personal preference. They've been in here for over a year now, probably about a year and a half we're running on, and so far, no complaints. Step one of this whole shebang is to turn off your pumps. So I already turned off my secondary Red C-Max pump. I left my return pump on and I am cutting off my MP10. If I can remember how to do it, we're good. Luckily, I have this little flip up hood and with the super duper extendo arm, I'll be good to be from here. No need to change settings. You just click the on button, normal. Normal house light. The only other thing they told me was to try to keep this as flat as possible up towards the light. So, here goes nothing. Oh yeah, the lights are freaking, wow. This little wand is really nice. All right, so back corner, all the way at the top. Like, I mean, this is no, no coral there. We're reading like 120 on top of my Monty, and also this is 80. There's a little bit of Monty growing here. I don't wanna hit it. Holy crap, right here is a hot spot. We're reading 380. 380 right on top of where this Monty's growing. 355, 355, a little bit over to where the tips of my acro are, 200. 200 where my acros are, 200. Do I got 200 going once? Yeah, so I definitely have like a, a rim of non-hitting, non I guess. Again, only hitting like 80 over here and over here, another like 80. That center spot is definitely a, a little hot spot. Holy shit, 600, I think this thing's broken. What? I'm getting 800 right here. This is directly under one of the one of the lights. 600. Yeah, if I bring it up just a little bit, 700. Dang, good thing my rockscape goes down. That would freaking toast some stuff. A thousand. That is crazy. 350. Here's back to the 800. So yeah, that's where the two the two pucks are. Right under those. Getting right now. Holy shit, 1,200. Again, where the puck is, we're up to 700, 150. Front of the tank, yeah, like over here is another rim of not much light. Up here is only getting 
seven, nine, 13. So definitely nothing in the front. Top layer down, let's move to level two. I think it will start to flatten out a bit the lower we get and the wider the beam gets. At least one could hope because if there's a thousand all the way down, whew, we're in trouble. JK, no we're not because everything's thriving. We're at 350, uh, where these guys are, Three, 300, 350, 320. So it's, it's, it's flattening out a bit. 500, oh, we're under the puck again. 500, so definitely got a thing. I gotta move that, that's, maybe that's why that guy's frying. Over here, we got 340. And then over here at this corner, we're back at 230. So out, outside's definitely still lacking. Definitely cannot grow anything on the front glass. Not that you would wanna grow anything on the front of your glass, but. If you did in this tank with this setup, not gonna work out. This is not what I expected so far. Bianca from Future here. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to John Morales, Eminem Mix, M plus M for the $10 applause. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Center, center of tank, 210. Right next to this beautiful little torch, 200. And right next to my frag rack over here, 170. All right, I think we're only gonna do one more left. Look at those clownfish. They love it over there. It's almost like you're testing the temperature on like a chicken or something. You just gotta stab it in there and just make sure it's primed and ready to go. I actually didn't think this was gonna be as helpful, or I didn't, how should I say this? I think this is gonna be way more helpful than I actually anticipated. What are we out of this bubblegum digi? Because heat all of a sudden, although it doesn't make sense because he was doing great and then now he's not. 175. I don't know, he should be doing fine. All right, what are we doing down here where this, uh, this stuff is? 140, sand bed down here. We're looking at 120 right on top of the, uh, Right next to the Bam Bams, 125, front by the chalice here, 90, 85, by these guys, which they love it, 85, they're doing really well at 85 par. Multiple heads popping up, Zoa Gardens rocking at like 130, about 70 on the Duncans, and this back corner is getting like, uh, like 10. <laughs> That's not good. Take this guy out of the water. <sighs> that was kind of fun. I'm gonna throw all these into these pictures. That, that threw me through a loop. According to my chart, basically I wanna keep everything away from my rims unless it's something that grows in low light. And I definitely wanna keep stuff from underneath the hot spots of the pucks. Which it kinda works out because if you think about it, my rockscape is pretty much ideal for this lighting situation. It kinda like dips down and there's nothing too far on the edges and there's nothing in the centers except for the acros at the high power. Where the hot spots are, the rocks aren't there because it dips down this way. I don't know, maybe that's just what I'm saying, just to make myself feel better, but now I should be able to place the frags from my frag rack into their positions and find nice, suitable homes for all the beautiful corals. Definitely recommend picking up a par meter, especially before you start putting like expensive coral in the tank because the last thing you wanna do is throw something in there and you burn it out. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope you found this video helpful and at the very least, I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, please. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn the notifications on because I post new fish videos every single Friday. You're gonna wanna be here for Aquachella, I think next weekend, Aquachella, Aquachella, it's like a festival, I don't know. But I think it's next weekend or the weekend after that. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Later.